Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, we're back here today with another fight. Today we're doing an American F-14 versus a Japanese F-15. And so as we all know, the F-14 is a very dominant BVR capable aircraft. So we're going to match it up today with an F-15, which is also a very capable BVR aircraft. And what we're going to do is try to exploit the advantages of the F-14 against the F-15 and hopefully we can walk away with a victory here. So uh, let's go ahead and have a look at the specifications for each of these aircraft before we get started. Alright guys, so before we hop into the fight here, let's uh, have a look at the aircraft specifications. Uh, for the F-14 Tomcat, we have a crew of one pilot and one Rio. This is a radar intercept officer. He sits in the back seat for anyone who doesn't know that. Um, the wingspan of the F-14 uh, in a spread configuration is going to be 64 feet. And the wingspan in a swept configuration is going to be 38 feet. Uh, the weight of the F-14 in this current fight will be 71,725 pounds, which is extremely heavy for an F-14. This is due to the payload, which we'll talk about in a few seconds here. The maximum speed of the F-14 is going to be Mach 2.4 with a thrust to weight ratio of 0 0.88. The payload is going to be two AIM-9M Sidewinder missiles and six AIM-54 Phoenix missiles of the C variant. And so when I say the, the weight of the aircraft is extremely heavy, what I'm talking about is the fact that the F-14 in a combat situation would never fly with six Phoenix missiles. It would carry four and probably two Sparrows, two Sidewinders. I've brought six here today just because I think we're up against a formidable opponent, so I want to use them. Uh, that does mean I'll have to fire them off quickly in order to reduce the aircraft's weight. Uh, moving on to the F-15 here, we have a crew of one pilot, a uh, wingspan of 42 feet 10 inches, weight of 58,742 pounds in this fight due to the loadout, we'll talk about that. Uh, maximum speed is going to be Mach 2.6 plus with a thrust to weight ratio of 1.07. The F-15 is going to be carrying two AIM-9M Sidewinder missiles and uh, six AIM-120C AMRAMs. Okay, so that's going to be the uh, the weight of the F-15 based on that loadout. Okay, it's going to weigh 58,742 pounds. Now both aircraft are pretty heavy in this configuration. Everyone has a full fuel load, so it's really a matter of getting rid of as much weight as you can before the fight begins. All right, guys, so let's move on to the fight then. Okay, so here we go. We're in the F-14. Go ahead and hide the stick. Put the tit on switch the camera here uh, go ahead and hit set the uh, gun rate to high master arm on and let's turn on those beautiful cockpit lights there is a bandit bra 090 39 miles all right 39 miles 29,000 okay got our Phoenix missile selected now I do want to fire off the first missile just to send him defensive, but I don't want to just waste it. So what I'm going to do is just wait to get a little bit closer, probably 25, maybe slightly inside of 20. We'll see how we feel, and we'll give him one, and that should scare the shit out of him. Um, it'll force him defensive 100%. Um, and then he will more than likely fire off an AMRAM in the TWS mode, so we'll have to go defensive as soon as we fire off this first Phoenix missile. Okay, so we fired off the missile. We're going to go defensive by uh, dropping our altitude. And what we're doing there is just dragging that AMRAM, assuming that he's fired one. 
we don't have the launch notification yet we're just dragging it into high dense air here trying to maintain any kind of visual I can Okay, so that missile more than likely sent him pretty defensive. He got his AMRAM off. It's going to be pretty close here, so I'm not going to take any chances. I'm going to dive back down into high density air. Let's go ahead and drag that missile right down here. We should be good. Go ahead and put that into PAL mode and find this guy quickly because he is close. And this fight here really just depends 100% on how quickly I can pick him up. Nails 12 o'clock. And um, a spike I'm not getting him. I think I had him there for a second. 12 o'clock. Unable. Great. Just are so useful. Alright, there we go. We got a lock. And that's a phoenix out. Now we're going defensive. Uh, we just lock, lock. I'm going cold on him in case he's fired Got and spike, keeping the uh, the aircraft at a low altitude so the missile is in high dense air. Ah, we got him. Good kill, good kill. Target, seven miles. Yeah, that was easy. That was fairly easy. guys so this is the tack view for the f-14 versus the f-15 we'll go ahead and turn labels on for now until they start obstructing the view so you can see we got a closure of about 40 or sorry the range is about 40 nautical miles and um, he's already dropped his fuel tanks trying to ditch as much weight as he possibly can um, I did not drop my fuel tanks I should have but I didn't um, so basically, uh, as I said, I was expecting to get the first missiles off really quickly, the first two, um, the two Phoenix missiles, because as I said, the F-14 never flew with six Phoenix missiles in a combat situation. Um, it was just a little too heavy. Um, as far as I know, anyway, I watched the documentary and F-14 pilot was explaining that the only time that they flew with six Phoenix missiles was for a photo opportunity or something like that because it looked cool but uh, they generally didn't do that. So obviously I want to ditch the first two missiles pretty quickly, uh, but I also want to make them effective, right? I don't want to just throw them into the air for no reason. So therefore, um, I'm going to wait for about, I think it was inside of 20 nautical, or just outside of 20 nautical that I fired the first missile. Um, you can see the F-14 or the F-15 uh, already cranking. 
uh, anticipating a missile launch, which hasn't come yet because I'm he's expecting the missile to have been fired in TWS and therefore he will not receive a notification, a launch uh, warning or notification until the missile goes pit bull and it would technically do that at about 15 seconds to time of impact. So he's already cranking, anticipating a missile is already on its way. I'm waiting for a nice closure rate, or sorry, a nice uh, range differential here. So when I fire, it's uh, it's gonna make it an effective missile. And you can see I'm firing that missile at 17 nautical miles. Um, that is a very dangerous Phoenix missile at 17 nautical. And because it's gonna, it has tremendous amounts of speed, many of you already know at specific altitudes, the Phoenix missile can hit something like Mach 5, close to that. Um, so yeah, it's got a lot of energy. At 17 nautical miles, this could be a problem for him. Now, I would say the one mistake he may have, may have made is not firing an AMRAAM at me, although I understand why he didn't, because at that distance before he started cranking, it just would have been too far. It would have been a waste of a missile but it would have maybe put me defensive or something. But anyway, so I fire the missile and I still go defensive here because I am also anticipating a TWS launch of an AMRAAM. Um, at this point, he's gonna turn in and he obviously had me TWS locked, so he knew the distance. So he's gonna turn in and he's gonna fire off his AMRAAM at a, at a good distance, actually. Like, it's pretty good, 13 nautical. Now, luckily for me, I've already gone defensive Okay, so that AMRAM is not going to create any real issues for me. He's following me in, still doesn't, like, I think at this point he was assuming that I hadn't launched the missile because, you know, we were so close and he still hadn't got a warning. So he's coming in, he's pushing in, he's trying to get his kill, and then right around here he gets the, the notification for the Phoenix missile launch on him. So he's going to break defensive here. And at this range, if you try to energy kill a Phoenix missile, you're probably gonna have problems because you're too close and it's got too much energy. Looking at that Phoenix missile, you can see it's Mach 3.1. So it's got tremendous amounts of energy, um, which is what he still goes for though. He turns cold on it and watch this. Hold on, let me get this and then we'll pick the Phoenix missile. How do you do this? All right, whatever. We'll do it from here. So you can see he's trying to turn away from the missile here and that missile is following him. It's trying to get right up his tailpipe here. <laughs> Look at that. Look at how close that is to him. Five hundred and sixty-two feet. We'll slow it down a little bit. Three hundred twenty-four feet. Two hundred feet. One hundred and seventy-three feet. Oh, I think the closest I saw there was one sixty-four. So that missile came within 164 feet of his aircraft before he managed to outrun it. And I feel like at 164 feet, a 135 pound high explosive um, missile here, if it had detonated, I feel like it would have probably killed him or at least damaged him pretty badly, so. But it didn't. And the only thing that saved the F-15 in this little scenario here was its thrust-to-weight thrust ratio. And it's managed to pull away from the missile. And honestly, if he had waited an extra second to go defensive, that missile would have gone right up his tailpipe. <laughs> and so at this point, I think he's feeling pretty lucky. So let's speed that up a little. He's beat that missile. You can see his AMRAM up here was totally ineffective because I came down with me dropping my altitude. Um, I pushed the missile into high density air, which is also what he did. It's also another reason why he survived that Phoenix launch because we both pulled missiles down into high, uh, high air density. So here we are back on me. 
and he's fired another Phoenix missile here, or sorry, another AMRAM at 10 nautical miles. That's a little too far at these altitudes. At, uh, at 10 nautical miles for an AMRAM at extremely low altitude like this, the effective range of the AMRAM is closer to 7 nautical, so I'm not in too much danger. But this is the one of the this is one of the things I want to talk about with the F-14. The F-14's radar is really good at range, but at close range, it has a very limited degree that it can see. Okay, it's much uh, much more reduced compared to the F-15 or the F-18 actually. Um, so the F-14 has a tremendous disadvantage compared to these two aircraft when they get within very close proximities like this. So it's extremely important that the pilot have an understanding of where that aircraft is because if he's looking even a little bit over here like if it was a hornet and i was pointing my nose here it still would probably see him it might take a couple of seconds but the f-14 is not at this range it's going to have a hard time um, with those higher degrees we'll talk about that more in a later video but uh so basically you know i managed to keep my head on him i'm in pal mode here and I managed to pick them up and there's my Phoenix launch okay now the advantage that I have in this situation as long as I can maintain a radar lock at him at close ranges like this he's in big trouble because that means that his I'm, I've got a I've got a longer reach than him his AMRAM probably won't reach this distance with a high energy state but my Phoenix will at eight nautical miles my Phoenix missile is well within its energy capability to hit him so at 8 nautical, I'm going to fire that, and I'm going to drag that missile that he fired at me. I'm going to drag it to the side, force it to calculate another lead, and it's instantly going to go stupid and lose all of its energy. All right, so there goes that AMRAM. And look at its speed. It's got nothing. 315 true airspeed. Mach 0 0.5. That's, that missile's dead. It's useless. Looking over here, you can see that... I'm not sure if he tried to achieve a notch, but for a notch he would have had to been pointing this way, and he's not, right? So because he's not 90 degree of the missile. So therefore, that missile ends up hitting him at Mach 2.4, and if you remember from the video, it was still burning when it hit him. It still had full fuel. Not full, but you know, it was still burning fuel when it hit him. So pretty quick death for the F-15. So, um, what we can see here is that the F-14 has an advantage in terms of um, its reach with the missiles, right? As long as the pilot can maintain visual on him. If I had lost him at any point during this fight, uh, he would have more than likely snuck up behind me or managed to find me easier than I would have found him and I would have been in trouble. He would have been able to force me defensive um, with multiple launches of his AMRAMs and I probably would have died. But as long as I can maintain a visual or radar contact on him, uh, he's in big trouble, for sure. So you can see it took two Phoenix missiles to uh, dust off an F-15. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, that's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.